This video is going to focus on how to solve consumer math problems using percent proportions. There are other methods to solve these type of problems, but we're just going to focus on this method for today's lesson. So an actual percent proportion can be used when you're solving a problem like trying to just figure out a percent of a number. So say we want to find about 10% of 40. If this is the problem that we're using, we could use the percent proportion to figure this out. And that's set up as the part over the whole needs to equal percent out of 100. So to set up 10% of 40, 40 is going to be our whole. Percent is 10, it's given to us. 100 is always there. And then we're looking to figure out what is 10% of 40, so that would be our x. So if we use this percent proportion, we'd be able to figure out what 10% of 40 is. If we cross multiply and divide, we would figure out that 10% of 40 is just 4. So that's what a percent proportion looks like. Now we can use it and actually apply it to consumer math problems. So that'll be when we're trying to calculate sales tax, tip, or discount. So when you do that, it's going to be tax, tip, or discount. That's your part. It's going to be on top of the original price or total price. So maybe the total price of a bill at a restaurant or the original price of an item before it's on sale. We set that all equal to the percent over 100. When we're doing percent proportions, we always need to have a 100 in our percent proportion. Now, in our first example, we say tax means add. When you think of tax, when you go to the grocery store, you pay how much your items are cost, but then you also have to pay sales tax. That's the same with clothing in Virginia. Um, anything that you buy is going to have some sort of sales tax on it. Now, we have a $129 pair of Ugg boots with a 6% sales tax, and we're going to figure out what is that total price then with this tax added on to it. So we set up our percent proportion by having our two fractions set equal to each other. They told us that $129 is the original price, so that goes down on the bottom left here. We know that we're looking, sorry, we're looking for 6%. Of 100 so 6 is our percent that goes on top and then 100 goes on the bottom we always put our percents out of 100 because if you want to remember it as if you think about what's a perfect on a test hundred percent so that's the most you can get on a percentage um, scale so that's always going to be our whole on the percent side now the only blank we have left is up here that's going to be our X because we're looking for what is 6% of $129 that's what you're trying to solve for, so that's our x. All we have to do now is just cross multiply. So we do x times 100, which is written as 100x, equals 129 times 6, which is 774. To solve for x, we divide both sides by 100, and that gets us x equals $7.74. So that means that the amount of tax is just going to be $7.74. That's what 6% of 129 was. But now when it asks for the total price that's paid, we need to add. Tax means you add. So we do $129 just for the boots plus the $7.74 of sales tax. So the total price for these boots altogether that you're going to be handing over to the cashier if you want them, it's $136.74. So just remember for tax that we're adding, now the T in tax, if you think of a T, T kind of looks like a plus sign. So that can remind you that you need to add when you're talking about tax. Now the other type of um, percent proportion that we might need in consumer math is to calculate for a discount. So sometimes things go on sale and when you're talking about a discount, you're saving money. So you're going to be subtracting. So discount means subtract is what we're going to add in here. Now this problem tells us that we have a $299 set of headphones and they are 15% off. So the original price of these headphones is $299. We know that they're 15% out of 100 and we're looking to see what is 15% of this original price so that we can figure out how much we're saving. So if we do our cross multiplication, x times 100 is 100x equals 299 times 15, which gets us 4,485. And then we just have to divide by 100 in order to get our x value, which is 44.85.
or $44.85. So the actual discount that we'll be getting is $44.85. And the total price that we'll end up paying, we have to take our original price. And since we're talking about a discount, we're decreasing that value. We're subtracting how much money we're saving, which is $44.85. And when we do that, our total price for these headphones is going to be $254.15. So when you're talking about discount, discount starts with D. D sounds like decrease, so we're subtracting. We're making a smaller amount. So when you're adding tip, tip is, or sorry, when you're adding tax, tax is going to make your cost more than what it was. Discount, you're saving money, so your and final price should be cheaper than what the actual product started out as. Now the last thing that you could calculate for consumer math is tip. Now tip also starts with T, so just like add, tip is going to, or just like tax, tip is going to mean that we're going to be adding. So a tip is something that you give to someone like a waiter at a restaurant or a hairdresser at a salon, um, somebody at the car wash washing your car, that kind of thing. All of those jobs um, usually require that the person getting the service is going to tip that person a little bit extra amount. So typically when you go to dinner, you have a waiter or waitress and they're gonna serve you dinner and then you're gonna leave them some sort of tip. Tips are usually at a restaurant anywhere from 15 to 20%. So dinner at Red Lobster was $65.13, but you're gonna leave a 20% tip because you had really great service. So our whole original price here, our total price was $65.13. Where we know we're going to leave 20% and percent goes over 100. So we want to figure out what is 20% of this number. So X is our part on top of our whole price here. So we do X times 100 for our cross multiplication. And then 65.13 times 20 which gets us 1,302.6. And then we have to divide by 100 on both sides. When we do that, we get x equals 1 point, or sorry, 13.026. Now we're talking about money here. So when we have money, we have to round to the nearest cent, which is two places after our decimal. So how much is the tip? We would have to leave $13.03. Since we're rounding to this hundredths place, the six bumps this two up to a three when you round. So then the total price paid, we're talking about tip, so that means we add. So we take our original price, which is $65.13. We add 1303, and that gets us 78 16, or $78.16 as the very total price of what we're paying for our bill. So that's our food plus the tip for the waiter or waitress and the people that are going to clear the tables after our meal. So just some reminders when you're doing these. Set up your proportion first. Use that model that we had at the top of the note, notes page. Solve for x using your cross multiplication and division. And then you need to either add or subtract to answer the question. So if they ask you for sale price or the total price, you need to make sure that you're adding or subtracting to get that. If they're just asking you what is the tip, like we did in part A here, then you can just give that number that you get in your proportion. But if it asks for what's the total price paid or what's the sale price, make sure that you do that final step of adding or subtracting.